What's going on everybody? It's West and I, and I am here back with another video to talk to you about the latest episode of House Trap Monday. I'm sure you've seen it. If not, make sure you go to the top link in the description and watch Sean Wood's video, House Trap Monday Episode 2, because if you don't watch that first, this might not make a lot of sense, but you can still watch it if you want, if you're interested in learning uh, about how I make a YouTube series. Now for this episode of House Trap Monday, I used a Sony A7S III camera. Its low light performance is absolutely amazing. We've been filming these episodes in some dark places, like this entire last episode, episode two, was filmed in a basement. Basements are not known for being well lit, and we were using two small lights, and that camera picked up everything, and it was so clean, it wasn't grainy, it was perfect for what I was using it for. And then the gimbal I was using was the DJI Ronin RS... And the gimbal I was using was the DJI RS2. That gimbal is absolutely amazing. I love the touch screen on there. It makes all the settings so easy to get to. You don't have to open an app. It's super smooth, super strong. It's got to be my favorite gimbal I have ever used. If you're interested in any of this gear, there are affiliate links down in the description. Make sure you click those. It helps me out a little bit at no extra cost to you. So if you're interested, check them out. And the light that I was using was this softbox light right here. This is just a simple one from Amazon with a simple daylight colored temperature bulb inside. It's got a little softbox on there to smooth out the light and it's super cheap. I think it's like $50 for the kit of two of them and I really like it. I do wanna to upgrade to a much nicer, brighter, better light, but this light definitely gets the job done and it's pretty small and compact as well. Definitely recommended for budget filmmaking and if you know what you're doing with lighting, you can make it look pretty good. For audio, Sean just used his Rode lapel microphone. It's a little wireless microphone, so it goes from his shirt down to a pack, and the pack goes to my Zoom H6. There's a little receiver, and then I plug that into the Zoom H6, and I had that on my belt, and that was how we were recording the audio. And then the audio didn't sound super good right away, so I used Adobe Premiere's Essential Audio Panel, and I corrected, I took away some of the reverb, some of the background noise, boosted things, used a compressor, used EQ to make it sound really nice. I saw a lot of comments from the first video, episode one of House Trap Monday, and everyone was talking about how echoey it was. Now, I was trying to use two microphones, and we were filming in some rooms and some basement areas that were a little bit echoey. I was recording on the lapel microphone pretty low, and then pretty low on the shotgun microphone as well. I put the two together, it sounded good, it had a good feel to it, but the shotgun microphone was just picking way too much of the room echo, and I couldn't get rid of it in post. So this time, I just went with the little lapel microphone, and it actually did really good. I was super impressed. It sounded like it was recorded in a studio, and that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to record it on the little lapel microphone, unless we need to do something else. Sean and I are actually going to sit down and do an interview soon, and we're probably going to use a mixture of this shotgun microphone and little lapel microphones, and we'll see how that works. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty cool. Now, one of the ways that I'm making Sean's House Trap Monday episodes look really cool and be really engaging is I cut in lots of B-roll over the top. I recorded Sean talking about all the traps and doing all the stuff, and then I recorded afterwards him using the traps. Cutting those over top makes a much better video. People can see the little details, they can see all the close-ups, and it just breaks up the flow and makes it feel so much more professional. So if you're making a YouTube video and you want it to look more pro, cut in B-roll over the top to show all the things that's going on. That's one of my favorite ways to make a video look way more professional. Also, I do little cinematic sequences where we cut to no talking and there's just music and it's showing Sean do different things. Like when he was filling the holes, there was just music or setting traps. And then the music continues as he does the outro for that scene. And then we go into the next scene. Little editing tricks like this make it go from feeling like just a YouTube video where we just recorded something happening to feeling like it's an actual TV show, like maybe it could even be on the Discovery Channel. 
I always liked watching those TV shows, like educational TV shows from the Discovery Channel. They're so cool, and kind of that's how I'm trying to form these videos, and people really like it. It's fun, it's entertaining, it keeps the viewers engaged. So if you want to make any videos like this, just follow some of these tips. So we did filming on day one, and then a week later we came back and we filmed day two. Then I took all the footage, dumped it, rough edited everything, synced up the audio, went through everything, got it all where I needed it to be, color graded it, added graphics, added B-roll, added text, added everything we needed, built up everything, and then I rendered it out. I did that over two different days, and in total it took about eight hours to edit the video. Editing videos like this takes way longer than you'd think. You have to curate, you have to sort, you have to sync up stuff, you have to sort through all the footage and try to find what's best, you have to edit all the audio, add music, add all this stuff. It takes a really long time, but if you don't spend time on your videos, it definitely shows. So if you spend a long time and work hard, you will get better, you will get faster, a video like this might take you like multiple days of work, and that's okay. In the end, it's gonna look really good. I would suggest if you're having troubles editing your videos and you're like, this is taking absolutely forever, learn keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts in Adobe Premiere, some of them I've mapped, some of them are just from the software itself. They make editing so much faster and so much more fun. I almost only use keyboard shortcuts to edit. I like move the player head around with my mouse a little bit, and then I do keyboard shortcuts for basically everything, for edits, cuts, ripple edits, ripple deletes, moves, slides, duplications, everything. I use keyboard shortcuts for that. It makes things so fast and so easy. So soon I'll probably make a keyboard shortcut guide for Adobe Premiere to help you get way faster at your editing. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see that video. Now, another thing that's super important for videos is thumbnails. Now for this one, we wanted a super eye-catching thumbnail. We wanted a thumbnail that was funny and attention-grabbing. So Sean decided to put on a chef's hat because we're trying to help a kitchen, a restaurant, get rats out of their kitchen and everything, you know. So he put on a chef's hat, we set up cameras, he grabbed his pet rat and his kitchen knife, and yeah, it's like he's trying to defeat the rats in the kitchen or the rats in the restaurant. It was such a funny idea, that was such a fun shoot. It's really hard to get the rat to pose, but we did get some really good shots of that rat when it finally cooperated. All right, we're shooting the thumbnail photo now. We are gonna make it really funny and interesting, and hopefully people are gonna click on it. John's gonna be wearing a chef's hat. Kind of looks like a shower cap, so I gotta be careful. Poofy. Yeah, work on the lighting. Oh, it's coiled around the front. Yeah. So we're not blowing out the highlights. We don't want that. Oh, much better. So the idea of this thumbnail is I'm wearing a silly chef's hat. I'm gonna hold my pet rat, and then uh, like a big knife here. We just got a cut coast set. These are really expensive and sharp knives. But... So something about my pet rat, something like this. I don't know, serious look or goofy look or? Uh, more like serious look like you caught that rat and you're gonna get it. Yeah, you're like, I wanna get like, like, like this. Oh, oh no. that's. Careful. Maybe holding it this way. This way's better? That way's a little better. The other way just is like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that's good. Oh yeah, this looks way better right here. I like that look. Oh yeah? Mm, yeah, I like that. I think it looks pretty good. You can't see him super well. I think if he's sideways, yeah. he's, you show more long. You're gonna have to wash this knife when we're done. You're covering your eye with the knife. Okay. Oh. Ah! Ah! Little. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> All right. You gotta he's, see. Now he's posing. Those are some good poses. Can you get it? The, uh, vertical. A little wider. So yeah, that was a super fun photo shoot. I love shooting thumbnails and editing them in Photoshop, just making them look super awesome. Make sure you put time into your thumbnails as well, because if you don't put any time into your thumbnail and you just let it auto pick a spot, or you just pick one of the little preview spots, or you just use a photo, 
it might not get very many clicks, and that's not good. Make sure you use eye-catching text and eye-catching visuals. Make sure your subject is nice and separated from stuff. Sometimes I even like to put the text behind the subject as long as it's still readable. Like the word restaurant, you can still read it. You still can fill in the gap between where his head is, where it's covering the text. It works out, and I think it looks super professional. And that about wraps it up. That is how I made episode two of House Trap Monday. I hope you liked this video. If you wanna see more, if you wanna see the upcoming interview and more videos from me, make sure you subscribe. Also make sure you like and comment to help out that algorithm because we all know that's super important, for me at least. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.